Hello everybody, it's Chris Bezanoy or Chris B with CSB Security Inc and another informative video. Today we're going to talk about access control under the new regulations. We're talking post October 17th, 2019, how important access control is to get your license or to operate a cannabis production facility in Canada. But it is an updated video from one that I produced about a year and a half ago. Before we move forward, what I'm about to tell you is based on my experience over the past six years, dealing with Health Canada RMIs, helping people get licensed, worked on over 420 applications thus far, uh, done a whole bunch of security system designs, review of other security system designs done by integrators, security contractors, other consultants. Nonetheless, what I'm about to tell you is my opinion, and of course your opinions and experiences may vary. So a little bit of a history here. Uh, under the older regulations, we're even talking as far back as the MMPR and of course the ACMPR, Health Canada required that you restricted access to all cannabis present areas, but also required that you log to and from the doors leading to those areas. What ended up happening was you had to have a card reader on one side of the door to restrict access to the space, but also to log everybody that went into the space. But you also needed a card reader on the inside of that room to log everybody that was leaving that space. So we called it logging to and from. Now there is a little bit uh, more to that, obviously. At one point in time, you can get away with just a high security keyway and a paper log. It's not to say that you can't get away with it now. It's just to say that over the years, Health Canada has noticed that most LPs will use electronic access control. It's a little bit easier to manage. It's easier to program. It's easier to retain logs, which is a requirement under the regulations, than it is to be able to use key control, a high security keyway, and of course a paper log. So this video is going to talk about electronic access control only. So, as I mentioned before, you still needed to log to and from all cannabis present rooms, restrict access to those rooms, and also retain logs of anybody that came and went from that room. Under the new regulations, we're talking about the Cannabis Act, the requirement to log to and from cannabis present rooms went away. The only requirement now to log to and from any room is the secured storage room. So you still need a card reader outside the room and a card reader inside the room to log access to and from secured storage. But any other room within your facility just needs to restrict access to the space. Under the new regulations, Health Canada considers cannabis present areas to be operations areas. A little bit of a gray statement. Nonetheless, it still remains true under the ACMPR and of course the new cannabis regulations, the new Cannabis Act, that you still have to restrict access to those spaces. We do so by electronic access control. It's easier to manage, it's easier to program cards or fobs, and of course it's easier to retain logs, which again is a requirement under the regulations. Whenever I'm asked to review somebody else's security system design, often I notice that they're still logging to and from every single cannabis present room or operations area in the facility. It's not to say that this is a bad thing. Sometimes there's a business requirement. Sometimes some LPs and of course applicants want to log to and from every single cannabis present room in the facility, as a business decision. They want to know who's coming and going. Some people want to do it as a time logging thing where you log somebody's time in a room, how long they were there based on when they logged out. Some security installers, you may have noticed a security design that still incorporates logging to and from or card readers on both sides of a main entrance door into a cannabis present area. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean that the security contractor didn't know what they were talking about. It doesn't mean that there it's a holdover from the ACMPR. It just means that perhaps they left those card readers there for a reason. As an example, some security integrators want to rearm the intrusion detection devices in areas that need them by swiping a card or a fob on the reader inside that room. So in other words, you restrict access to the space. You have to present your fob or card reader, uh, sorry, card, and you have to put in your unique pin to be able to get into the room. But to rearm the intrusion de detection devices in that room, you have to swipe a card on the way out. Not a bad way of going. It kind of gets rid of those intrusion detection panels you may have noticed in some of the facilities you've visited that is dedicated to the intrusion detection system. Nonetheless, feel free to reach out to us. Show us the designs that you're looking at. Maybe even if you're a security contractor, reach out to us and find out which areas need logging to and from, how best to arm and disarm those rooms, and how to restrict access to those rooms. The only other thing that I want to mention is that system programming is very important for the access control system. Health Canada requires that you restrict access to all cannabis present areas or operations areas, but they also went on record as stating you have to restrict access to those that have a business to be there. 
In other words, what they're getting at is if you have seasonal workers that come in to help you cultivate and help you harvest, do you really want them to have access to your mother and clone room? Do you want them to have access to the secured storage room? And the answer is obviously no. So you have to make sure you restrict access to sensitive areas, operations areas, any areas that have a higher restriction of access based on the programming of that access control system. We tend to recommend that you have three or four levels of access into each cannabis present area. One could be for the responsible person. One could be for the security contractor. One could be for a visitor who has no access into that space but still logs the fact that they went into the room. You could have uh, maintenance people have separate access control. Either way you look at it, you still have to restrict access to cannabis present areas or operations areas, and you still need to retain logs and restrict access to those areas to, that, to those that have a business to be there. One of the things that we notice comes up a lot with Health Canada RMIs is key control. Generally speaking, in an access control system, if you're using an electric strike to restrict access to the space, which is an electronic device that goes on the door to restrict access, Often the handles that lead and are installed on that door will have a keyway. And that keyway is used for emergency entrance. In other words, God forbid you should have a fire and fire services need to come into your building. It's a lot easier to get into spaces if they have a key. Yes, they may use the universal door opener, which is a big ax. Doesn't change the fact that most access control systems will have a high security keyway to be able to get into the room if the access control system fails or the electric strike doesn't pulse. Same remains true for magnetic lock doors. There are buttons that are usually installed on the inside of the rooms to be able to get out of the room to disengage the mag. The key with that situation is when Health Canada comes back to you and says, what are you doing about keys? Key control is still very important. It is part of access control into operations areas. You gotta make sure that that key or those keys are stored inside a key lockbox and only restricted people have access to those keys. We're talking RPs, we're talking heads of security. It doesn't change the fact that Health Canada will come back to you and say, what are you doing about keys? It doesn't mean that you have to remove the key set. It doesn't mean that you have to maybe put food grade caulking inside the key so that nobody can put a key in the door. It just means you have to articulate, yes, there are keys. Yes, we've configured the keys for a hierarchy to make sure that the master key doesn't open every single door, but also so does the maintenance key. It just means you have to let Health Canada know that there are keys on site, there is key control, and of course SOPs that have been written to govern how those keys are managed. Moving into SOPs, your access control system is gonna need SOPs. SOPs are security operating procedures. You need to let staff know how to operate the system how to program the system. Maybe your head of security is tasked with programming cards and access into operations areas. They're gonna to need to know how to program the system. They're gonna to need to know what happens if a card goes missing. What happens if that master key goes missing? You need to make sure you have SOPs ready for Health Canada when they come to review and inspect your facility to get a license or even post license inspections. You need to make sure your SOPs are in order and speak to how you govern the access control system, what happens if there's a failure in the access control system, what happens if a key goes missing, a card goes missing, the policy procedures and protocols in place to ensure your facility is still access controlled. Nonetheless, keep in mind that there are different ways to do access control. We tend to like electronic access control, which is card readers on inside and outside of doors in certain areas, or at least on outside of doors restricting access to the space. It doesn't mean you can't use keys and written logs. It just means Health Canada likes access control systems that are electronic. It's a lot easier to manage. It's a lot easier to maintain. It's a lot easier to control. It's a lot easier to have those logs retained. And you don't have to worry about keys missing. Under the new regulations, we're talking post October 17th, 2019, still remains true. Restriction of access is still extremely important. Reach out to us. If you want any guidance on any floor plans you have, we could certainly design the system for you. We will make sure there's access control in areas that need to be there, but also we will design the system based on best practices. In other words, you're going to want access control on your front door. You're going to want access control on your motorized gate, potentially. You're going to want access control into secured storage, dry, trim, packaging, shipping and receiving. There are reasons why we design systems with access control on doors that you may not need under the regulations. Nonetheless, reach out to us. We can certainly help you. This video has been updated for post October 17, 2019, but 
the methodology around access control hasn't changed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.